The queen of reggae music, first lady of songs, female vocalist supreme. What has it taken to maintain that level of excellence in a career spanning several decades? My guest, Marcia Griffiths O.D. <laughs> Marcia Griffiths, welcome to Profile. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time. Yeah, and the, you know, I am absolutely stoked to have you on my set. This is, you know, an amazing opportunity. I'm, you know, glad to have you on the set, as I'm saying. And because you have such a journey, and even right now, just yesterday, you were involved in a new project. First, let's talk a little bit about your new project and then go back to talking a little bit about your career. There are quite a few new projects that we are trying to complete right now. Yes. We were just doing a video yesterday with Shaggy. And um, studio-wise, I have two unfinished albums that I'm trying to complete. We started before the pandemic, and we are now trying to complete that album on Tad's label. And also another one on the Penthouse label. So right now, I'm really, really busy. Besides, you know, I'm preparing myself to do a tour with Tanya Stevens and myself in Europe. So it's a lot going on. So I try to keep my physical self ready and fit, mentally, spiritually, and, you know, just be ready. And continuing to collaborate, as you pointed out as well. So you, you pointed to Shaggy right there and Tanya Stevens, but you're collaborating with other artists as well. Well, as you touch that point, I've collaborated with 50 artists so far. And this is what we're looking at for my... F well, this year, it's 59 years I'm celebrating in the business. But for the 50th anniversary that we were planning, which is still going to happen... I really went for 50 artists so I could celebrate the 50 in a wonderful way with each artist performing one song, you know, with me in the performance on stage. This is a concert that I don't think the world has ever seen, you know, so we're still going to make that come to pass. Now, you've, you, you spoke a little earlier about the pandemic and the kind of impact that has had in terms of the finishing of the album. How, how difficult was that as an artist? Well, the only problem we experienced where that was concerned is mingling, you know, going in the studio to talk to musicians, work with musicians and all that. And we had to be so you know, withdrawn, wearing masks, and you don't perform well with masks in a studio. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, we, we, everybody does cool out at that time. So that's what really, and good thing is that when you withdraw and you're at home, you can create more songs, you know, and even the whole pandemic thing, it gives, it puts you in another frame of mind that you, you start thinking about other things your eyes start opening up to what's happening in the world different kind of energy different energy coming in so you want to just put all of this in songs and express them through the music and continue to teach and uplift the world you no. know because the most important thing is a message in the music so that's what i think about all the time what's happening in the world. Is that what attracted to, um, you to music to begin with? Because your story begins in West Kingston. Were you always singing? <laughs> That's so interesting. Every time, that will never ever leave my mind as long as I live. Where I was born and raised, it's like a part of me, a major part of me. I was born in West Kingston born and raised in West Kingston, Oxford Street, that's Hannah Town, they call it. And the whole experience growing up in Hannah Town was the most beautiful part of my life because that's your innocence and 
all we had at the time was love. That was a bond in my family. We were a poor family, but we were so bonded that just the thought of me thinking about my mother passing would make my stomach quiver because none of us would even want to think about that. That's how connected we were as a family. If we don't have food on the table, that love just full everybody belly. That is how it was for me. So growing up there with every, you, everyone in our surrounding, we were like one family. Yes. You know, we, we didn't have to worry about if we go to the shop, somebody going to stick us up or anything like that. We were just so free and happy. Music was my life. We had a radio fusion and we were just tuned to everything and we were influenced by American music at that time. You know, we used to hear a lot of American music and very little, maybe one and two mentor. You wouldn't hear reggae music. Well, it was called then, what was it? Ska, between Ska and Rocksteady. Yes. But those music don't play on Sundays. They refer to them as rag music. So you would never hear anything like that. So I was so satisfied with listening to all these beautiful female singers in America because that's what inspired me. Aretha Franklin, Patti LaBelle, Dionne Warwick, Carla Thomas, which was the first song I walked on stage and did No Time to Lose. So I was so happy living in my own world, singing at school concert, singing in the church. And I have two other sisters and we would just have to just sing at nights while we were in the room because we couldn't even go to the gate to even look out to see what's going on on the street. Because parents were very strict. Very strict. It was like prison, but we were happy because we didn't know that all that was happening. We grow now to realize that it's the love that our parents have for us that it's a protection, you know? And we were good kids, but they were very strict. But saying all of that is to say that nothing could replace that experience. And I usually say that if I could be 16 again and give up all that experience, I would hold on to what I have. I wouldn't want to be 16 again. If I had to relinquish that and just wipe it out of my memory, no way. So a vastly different kind of um, environment that you grew up with than the West Kingston that people might be acquainted with today or know of. So when you, when you, when you think about the West Kingston you grew up in and the West Kingston of today, how do you feel? Wow. I pass through sometimes, but I feel, still feel safe and secure because no matter who comes in, they come in and they hear that, wow, this is where I, I'm from and I was born and raised here. So when I pass through, I move through with confidence and they all embrace me with love when I go to Hannah Town. And there's a picture on the wall down there, big picture that they paint with me. So everybody knows that that's my hometown. But to compare then and now, it's frightening. Frightening? Frightening. It's like a nightmare, you know. Bunny Wheeler and myself, because he's from Anatone as well. And we were planning to do a big concert at Shetola Park School, which is where we went to. And uh, it never manifest. But I still would try and do something for the community, you know. We're going to talk a little bit about how you move from, about growing up. Um, and moving into music, not, not just in terms of sort of singing it around the house and in the community and at events, but formally, um, you know, formally becoming a part of your life into the record deals that would follow. But we have to take a break now on Profile. We are speaking with reggae legend Marcia Griffiths. Profile returns right after these messages.